to Booked MM with Mrs. Mullen. Today we are going to be looking at two books in this video. Um, both of them are by Sally Green. It's Half Bad and Half Wild. Um, this is book one and book two in a trilogy. I can't tell you what the third book is called because I can't find it in either of these. I just know it's going to happen because she calls it in the back a trilogy and because, well, Every author seems to be writing trilogies these days. That's just like the thing to do. You don't do one book, you do three. But anyway, um, Sally Green, I really don't know how much, how many other books that she's written. Um, this is my first experience with Sally Green. Now, let me tell you, in my enthusiasm to tell you about these books, spoiler alert, I may tell you something you don't want to know. So if you're worried about that, go ahead and stop. It's time to stop! It's time to stop, okay? No more! Alright, so, most of the books that I've posted so far on this channel have had females as your main hero. But guess what? These are about a guy. So, there's a great change right there. Um, these are about Nathan. And Nathan is different from everyone else. And I know you're going to think that's the archetype. That's what everybody does. Their hero is different from the society in which they live. And that's kind of how it goes, right? Because that's your classic hero. But let me tell you a little bit about his world. All right. In the world in which he lives, which is our Earth, there are three kinds of humanoids. I'm going to say humanoids because they're not entirely human and all right, so you've got the Fane, which are you and I, or Fane, um, kind of like the muggles of Harry Potter, right? Then you have the black witches and white witches, and we're not talking race here. We're talking dark versus light, good versus evil. But those lines are kind of blurred because as you read these stories, you find out that maybe the good is not so good and the evil is not so evil. It just depends on your perspective. Now, before you start pulling out your wands and thinking about Death Eaters and Harry Potter, um, the witches of this story remind me a little bit more of the X-Men because <laughs> these guys have specific powers that are gifted to them and they have one gift and their gift could be something like invisibility or they could produce fire or they could turn into an animal or they could have the power to heal, or they could have the power to slow time, or any of those kinds of things, which is not, you know, learn a spell and cast a spell. So it's not that kind of witches. Um, that's why I say more like X-Men. However, there is a certain black witch who has discovered that if he kills another witch and eats their heart, he can have their power too. So there's where that idea of the black witches is evil and killing everyone comes from. Now, Nathan is half white witch, half black witch, and he's the only one to have ever existed. Now, there are half bloods, but most of those are half fane and half witch, not half good, half evil, right? Well, the society in which he lives is afraid of him. And so they've enacted a bunch of codes that restrict what he is able to do. Now, I am covering both books at the same time. So I know this is getting long winded, but I'm actually telling you about two books. So that's why I keep going. Um, in the society which he lives, they've started to enact certain rules that apply only to Nathan, like because he's the only one that exists, right? But they, they make the law sound like it's not specific to him. It's to half codes is what they say, but I mean, it's Nathan. And he knows that and his family knows that, but it's something he has to live with. It kind of reminds me a little bit of um, Hitler and the Nuremberg Laws, passing things specific to one group of people that aren't fair. Um, like he can't talk to people and if someone talks to him, they have to go tell the council that they were with him and he can't go to school and he can't leave the county, all sorts of things, which very much sounds like the Nuremberg Laws. Now, Nathan is actually, at one point, yanked from his family, and they decided that they're going to train him. But the task at which they're training him for is to kill his father, his father, Marcus, the one that figured out about eating the hearts, right? And so this entire series is basically how Nathan deals with being ostracized from his community, how he deals with what his gift is, 
um, how he finds somebody to care about him, how he makes friendships, and how he deals with the fact that people expect him to kill his father. Now, unfortunately, uh, I don't know how it ends. I'm waiting for this third book because it leaves you on a cliffhanger. So I don't know. You might want to wait till the third one comes out. But I do know that it's very well written. Um, this is in the realm of fantasy. And I think that you're going to like it. Now, this is not one of the Lone Star books, but it's really good. Thank you for tuning in to Booked MM with Mrs. Mullen. This is your daily reminder. Keep reading.